Got another question on the buffer solutions topic here, so we're up to number eight now. There it is there, so if you want to have a go at that, pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so we'll make a start. So part A, we've got to calculate the pH of the buffer. As you can see I've already written up my custard over salt expression, so the H plus concentration of a buffer is Ka times the acid concentration divided by the salt concentration. Now, if you notice in the information here, it says the concentrations of the propanoic acid and the propanoic ions are both one mole per decimeter cubed. Basically, they're going to cancel each other out, which will leave H plus concentration equal to Ka. So we've got the Ka value for the propanoic acid, 1.35 times 10 to the minus 5. So that's the H plus concentration as well. So all we need to do now is minus log that to get the pH. So to two decimal places, that comes out at a pH of 4.87. So moving on to part B, I've written up the equilibrium again for the buffer, and we've got to use this to explain um, the effect or how the buffer would respond if a small amount of ammonia solution is added. So ammonia is a base. It's going to accept H plus ions and form ammonium ions. So the upshot of that is the H plus concentration is going to drop so the equilibrium responds by the propanoic acid dissociates more and puts the H plus ions back. So in other words, the equilibrium shifts to the right. Okay, so we'll move on to part C. It's not easy this. Um, so if you get this bit right, you're doing really, really well. Um, probably one of the hardest buffer questions I've seen. Right, so we're told the student adds this many grams of magnesium to one decimeter cubed of the buffer. So the magnesium is going to react with the propanoic acid and it's going to take some of the propanoic acid out of the buffer. And you'll see from the equation, it's actually going to generate some of the propanoid ions. So it's going to put some propanoid ions into the buffer. So the first thing I've done is worked out the moles of magnesium, mass over MR, 0.25 moles. So then if we feed that into the buffer equilibrium, so the mole ratio is telling us that if 0.25 moles of magnesium is reacting, 0.5 moles of acid is going to react because of the ratio. So this is going to change, it's going to go down by 0.5 from the initial one mole per decimeter cubed. So the new moles or the new concentration, because it's all in one decimeter cubed, tall there, is going to be 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed. And then if we look at what's going to happen to the propanoid ions, they're going to increase by 0.5. Just go back to this equation. So for every mole of magnesium that reacts, we get twice as many moles of propanoid ions formed. So we're going to get 0 0.5 moles of propanoid ions forming. So that's going to go up from 1 to 1 1.5 moles per decimeter cubed. So if we feed that into the acid over salt expression to calculate the new H plus concentration, Ka is still the same, 1.35 times 10 to the minus 5, but the new acid concentration is 0 0.5. The new salt concentration is 1.5. So that's given us an H plus concentration now of 4.5 times 10 to the minus 6 moles per decimeter cubed. So the new pH of the buffer is going to be minus log of this new H plus ion concentration. So it's minus log of 4.5 times 10 to the minus 6. And to two decimal places, it comes out at 5.35. So, like I said before, very, very well done if you got that right, because that is not straightforward.